Today's episode is brought to you by Postmates. Postmates, it's now the time. They've always been there, but now is the time you need them more than ever. <laughs> Trust me on this. Also, today we're brought to you by Hawthorne. Hawthorne is going to deliver you things that are going to make you smell good just because you're stuck indoors. Don't mean you don't have to smell good. If you're with people, trust me, after a few days of stanking the way you stank, they're going to be like, put on some Hawthorne. We'll get to that as well. Let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghosts and Friend Dogs. Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the exciting episode of Cox and Crendo in the morning. Hey, welcome to Cox and Quarantine, week two. We are <laughs> quarantine. Yeah, I mean, more than week two, technically. Actually, Technically, yeah, it's true. the start of week three. Yeah. But that's that's fine, because we are in it for another month. At least another at least another 30 days. Yeah. Which, Here in the United States, at least. Some people are going insane. Personally, I'm not super affected by it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm not going insane. I'm just, my whole world is upended. Exactly. And I think that's I mean, I'm not a crazy a person. I just don't have, time is meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, I, let's say I think it's that for a lot of people where they're just like, well, I got all this time, like, what do I do? But there's like so many things they want to do they can't do, so they have to stay inside. I think it's worst for people that have like kids or like big families they got to be at home with, where it's just a bunch of people crammed into a space. Because you're worried about other people, right? You're like, well, yeah. I got to make sure they're having a good time too, and I got to take care of myself. We have to have space. We also have to make sure they're not getting sick. Thank God it's just me sometimes. You know what? <laughs> I yeah. I know some people are alone and they get, oh, I wish I had a pet or I wish I had someone to hold or I wish, no way. I'm concerned enough for myself. If I get like a cough, I'm like, oh no, this is it. I can't worry about someone else getting a cough. Oh my God. No way. No thank you. Yeah, but the other person could also take care of you. I'm not like one of those sick people that's like, <laughs> oh my nose. My nose is so scuffy. If you could just bring me some soupies. No, nah, I'm not that person. I'm that person. <laughs> Very much. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I've been, like, exercising at home. It's not the same, but it gets the job done. I was thinking about this the other day. I was trying to think how I could just spend time doing stuff, right? Because I don't just want to sit around all day. I feel like that is such a waste to just sit there and do nothing. Even yeah. though at nighttime I'll watch five hours of Netflix because I'm a terrible person. But <laughs> during the day, I'm just like, I got to do something. I have to be physical. And this has never been an issue in my life. I've never once before been like, I got to do something. But now that I can't, I have to. Right now they're like, you can't do it. I'm like, well, I have to do it now. Yeah. So I've been coming up with all sorts of things. And the thing that I think really stuck with me is one day I woke up. It was definitely, I just woke up kind of thought. And I was like, how do astronauts on the space station do this? Yeah. Right? That's true. Because you have to figure they're on a space station by themselves roughly or with one other person or two other people for the one guy was up there for a year. Yeah. Alone in space. And of course he had work, right? He was doing sciencey stuff, space flighting. But I imagine a lot of it is downtime just yeah. sort of floating in space <laughs> and i have to wonder after you know the initial i'm floating in space oh my god i i figure six months in you're like yeah uh, it's not that impressive <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and so what did he do day in day out for all that time they had to hook up to that damn uh i know they have a treadmill up there right yeah and probably a bunch of other stuff to keep busy but i was like okay so they worked out a little bit i can do that and then they did some work. I can do that. And then they, like, took care of their space. I can do that. And then, like, everything that I thought about them doing, I was like, okay, yeah, I know. I can make a version of that. And so now I'm trying to do what they did, not as a, oh, yeah, no, it'll be fun, but just let's get through every day. Let's just do day at a time yeah. and do a little bit every day. And then tomorrow we're about tomorrow. 
Because I imagine if you're in space, you're like, and a meteor could hit my ass. I don't care. So you're just like, we'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. It's all those things where, uh, you know, you get you get used to it after a while. Well, I guess some people don't. But, you know, it's I, I tweeted it where I was like, honestly, the thing I miss the most is the gym. Because to me, like going to the gym, it's like a way to get rid of your stress. There's like so many different exercises to do. I put on my uh, my AirPods and it's just like blah 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 blah, and you're like yeah yeah. But at home, it's like you can't really do that. I mean, the so like sometimes I'll just uh, go for a walk, usually at night when there's nobody around. <laughs> and then uh, you know, if I do go to the store, like if I go to the grocery store, I'd go the other day. I go like 30 minutes before closing when there's like nobody there. Because mm, you know, I wish that was the case for me. The thing is, like, I do that anyway, <laughs> so it's not out of the ordinary. Uh, so there's even less people now, which is fantastic. I pulled out the old, uh, I was like, do I have any exercise, like, DVDs? And I have one my mom gave me from, like, oh my God. seven years ago with Galad Express Workouts. And Galad is, like, a, the uh, like old buff Israeli man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, here we go. Today we'll do our Express Workouts. And then you, you just pick what you want. So, like, you'll do, like, shoulders, and it gives you, like, a 10-minute shoulder workout. You pick, like, arms. You'll do your arms. So you got, like, and you do cardio. He's got a thing. So I just alternate between all those and do it for, like, 40 minutes. And I'm like, all right, that's not bad. And I think it's actually hitting muscles I haven't worked out at, at the actual gym. So it's I think it's a little beneficial. Damn, that's incredible. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I just love like watching the uh, the people on that DVD because you know they just found like some random gym people like come be in this DVD so he'll be like Danielle can you go to the heavier weights and you can see in Danielle's face she's like I don't think I can but I have to because he just asked me <laughs> <laughs> and she's like yeah and he's like there we go here we go down and squeeze down and squeeze and he just it's uh, it's a great experience uh, Galad I'm Express glad Workout I'm glad Check that's it doing out. so well for you in yeah. fact I think it's on YouTube there's like clips oh of it boy. on YouTube if you want to check that out. Oh uh, boy! You know, don't I don't <laughs> want to check it out. I'm good, but <laughs> you might have you might check it out. It's great. Um, so yeah, I've been doing uh, that, and I mean, overall, uh, my life hasn't changed uh, too much. I've developed your life. My schedule <laughs> is insane. Today I woke up at almost two p.m. I know a lot of people say that they're bored at home. I'm not. I straight up just work. I an online job means you never really stop, so I'm constantly doing stuff. And for some reason, the last week I was more busy than I've been in a month, which is insane. Huh. Which is insane. Thankfully, it's that stops. Right, last yeah. week was just crazy, and I think it was because I booked a lot of things. That's why I was going to be in London. So on oh, yeah. Monday and Tuesday, had a ton of stuff already planned for online things, and then I agreed to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, for Res Digital, since I wasn't going to be there in person. And so I was like, okay, thankfully next week I start on my path to doing nothing, and I'm very thrilled about that. But I was just so busy, and so I couldn't uh, find the time to get things done that I also needed to do for my life, like go for walks or whatever. So yeah. I started doing uh, you know, at-home workouts, and for some reason, the last few days, I'll eat dinner at like – Nine o'clock at night, work out at like <laughs> eleven or midnight, and then stay up till four or five a.m. Not because I want to, but because I'm just awake and it won't go. And then working out, of course, wakes me up even more. So yeah. now I'm just even more awake, and so I just won't. Go. It's I'm so messed up. <laughs> I'm so messed up clockwise and schedule wise. And I want to reset and do morning time stuff. But here's the thing: every time I do that, I'm like, why did I do this? For example, earlier this week, I think it was Thursday, maybe. I was like, okay, well, I need to go to the grocery store uh, to do my, like, weekly really quick go in, grab some yeah. stuff, get out, right? And so I uh, went to the grocery store, and I got there at 8.30. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, 8.30 is the perfect time. Not everyone's up. It'll be fine. Nope. There was a line out the door. <laughs> my gro All the grocery stores near me are doing a thing where if you go, you stand in a line six feet apart from everyone, and then they let in ten people at a time. Huh. So they wait till pe so there's an entrance and exit door and they let in 10 people and then a few people come out and then they let in 10 more people, a few people come out and while I was in line a group of, I'm going to say a group of 
well-aged homeless gentlemen joined us in line. And they clearly weren't there for food. They were pissed right. off they had to wait in line because they were trying to get, and I quote, that Irish whiskey tastes so good. <laughs> um, and they were shouting at everyone in line, and everyone was trying to ignore them. Everyone was just like, please go away, because everyone's doing that six-foot thing, yeah. and they are, like, up on people. Yeah. And so finally, this one young girl starts talking to them, like, so what are you guys doing? What are you here for? <laughs> and everyone in line's like, oh, my God, stop. Stop talking to those guys. And they're just like, let me tell you about a girl from Compton. She made me so happy. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> please stop. And I wish it recorded well. It didn't, unfortunately. But uh, I managed to record some of it. <laughs> but there, it was windy, so there's wind in the way. All right. You can kind of hear what was being said. Special way. I See, it's so windy. And Irish, Irish mother. Yeah, he kept calling whiskey Irish, Irish mother. <laughs> like, it's Irish, Irish, Irish mother. Irish, Irish mother. Yeah, and he was like, I don't know, Im imagine, if you will, just the tannest, oldest white dude with a long white beard. He looked like <laughs> you would imagine an, if he... L.A. Gandalf. Yes, yes. <laughs> if he was digging in a mine, he'd be like, gold. And so it was him and then a, a young dude who definitely looked like he sold meth, riding a bicycle, and then two other guys who were sort of drugged out, sitting 50 feet away from us, like shouting at them. <laughs> yeah. And they would just keep yelling at each other. And this one guy was like, I'm in line for that good Irish, Irish mother. And everyone's just like, okay, mm-hmm. And the security guy who was there letting people in, he's like, sir, you cannot come in here today. And he's like, what do you mean? I knew a girl from Compton. She's dead now, died in 2013. We're like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? What is that? First off, what did that have to do with anything? Second off, why would you add that bit? And so they, they decided to leave and they go, fine, we'll go to CVS. And they go to CVS and come out with their alcohol and shout at all of us like, we got that mother, that good, good mother. And they like left. <laughs> and everyone in line was like, what the hell was that about? An old lady in the back was like, if that man gives me Corona, I'll be so mad. I was like, he's going to give you way worse than Corona, lady. <laughs> like, you should, be wor you should be worried. That guy was literally close talking you. I was like, why would you do that? They were so drunk and high. That's like the number one rule. It's just don't engage, don't make eye contact. Yeah, I know I know people are like, but they're people too. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> you don't got time for that shit. <laughs> like it's a lot. It can it's also be uh, dangerous. Yeah. And so I went to the grocery store and I got inside and I realized at first I was kind of pissed I had to stand outside for about 30 minutes. But then I realized when I got inside there were so few people in there. There was everything was there. You could get anything you wanted. They had announcements going that were like, "You are only allowed to take one thing of toilet paper, two bottles of like two two liters of water." They had uh, rules and regulations. Like, damn. All right. Well, they're definitely <laughs> handling this better than most people. Yeah. Like uh, when I went to the store, you could buy like one carton of eggs. Uh, you you could buy like one flu medicine or like cough medicine. You couldn't ever buy on those. Right. So they're uh. They're clamping down on, like, people that hoard shit. I mean, good. I saw a, uh, there's a Reddit channel. What are they called? Reddit page? Reddit category? Whatever they're Sub -reddit. called. Subreddit? Sub, thank you. I'm not from the internet, Crendo. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's a subreddit, R Trashy, I think it is. Um, All right. It's just trashy things. But one of the most recent ones have been people posting trash can photos of their neighbors and how... You know, this one lady had 15 loaves of bread in the trash that she just hoarded and then was like, oh, I can't eat 15 loaves of bread. She just threw moldy bread away. Or people <laughs> who are, you know, have all these fruits and vegetables they just bought a bunch of and then threw away because there's no way they could eat them all before they went bad. And I was yeah. like, the, men the mentality of I have to take care of me before anyone else is sometimes so insane. I understand it in chaos, in crisis. You're like, I got to make sure that I'm okay before I can make sure others are okay. But, y'all, sometimes well, you take it a little far. There's a line that people cross. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I gotta buy, like, 50 oranges. I wonder if it's the same thing of, like, a sale, right? 
where you go to a place and you see something on sale and you say, well, I have to have it because yeah. it's on sale. And if I don't buy it now, it won't be here next time. Right. And so maybe people are like all this bread. If I don't buy all the bread now, I won't have bread when I need it. But it's <laughs> illogical. Yeah. It's pretty much like uh, once it's like I said last week, I, I bought some stuff before the, the craze hit because once I saw the, uh, you know, the pan sanitizer gone. I was like, if I know my fellow Americans, they're about to freak the fuck out. <laughs> so, so I was like, let's just get some food. And I was glad I did because it's, uh, it's still going. I've been trying to figure out how much I'm willing, willing to risk stuff, right? So I, all week, have just been making food at home and, you know, trying to stay away from people. I even yeah. saw my dad this week walking uh, his dog. And he went to say hi, and I was like, I'm staying six feet away from you. I will not even get near you. <laughs> yeah. And so I've been very distant for most people. But uh, the other day I was just like, man, what if I just got a Chipotle burrito delivered? <laughs> so, <laughs> and so uh, I ordered it, and then someone came and delivered it, and this woman dropped it off. And I was like, oh, I think they gave me the wrong order. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I've never seen anyone deliver anything who was like, I'll, I'll handle this. She just went back, got it fixed, brought it back. I was like, you know what? Shout out to people being good to each other right now. Because she didn't need to do that. Yeah. It wasn't her fault that it was the wrong order. It was literally just a, a great, cool thing that she did. And I was like, thank you so much. She's like, don't worry. got to look out for each other. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> my heart. So here's the thing. It was a beautiful moment. But if I get Corona from a damn burrito, I <laughs> <laughs> it's it would truly be fate if that's the case. That would be fate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what goes on with that Chipotle. If they cough in my burrito. I've seen so many videos this week of people who cough in their hands and like wipe it on stuff. Or this one dude in an elevator who was like spitting in his hand and rubbing it all over the buttons. I'm like, who are that's these still, people? That still blows my mind. There's like people doing that. Or I saw there's like a TikTok like coronavirus challenge or whatever. I don't even know if it's a meme or not. I don't even think it's a meme. I think people are just apparently dumb. one kid who did it got coronavirus. Well, yeah, <laughs> no shit. I mean, it, it, it. You lick enough doors, you're gonna get something. Yeah, and I think people were like, "Oh well, it can't happen to uh, young people." So uh, yeah, but literally, it has. People have died. A baby just died. The thing is, like, even if you're younger, you're less likely to have serious repercussions from it. But that still doesn't mean you're going to get it and then give it to someone else who can have more serious uh, symptoms and actually die from it. Well, it reminds me of that Warcraft plague. Remember that way back in the day? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> where people <laughs> actively got people infected. Yeah. It reminds me of that where you saw people. I think there's a pretty good news article about it that just happened recently where it... There were people who were like, well, I'm not going to Orgrimmar or Stormwind. That's insane. I'm going to stay out in the middle of nowhere, and I'm not going to get killed by this plague. But yeah. then you had people who actively went <laughs> into town with the plague to kill people. Oh, yeah. And I think that is That's our modern society. Game. Yeah, that's a silly game <laughs> version of society where I don't know how they view life, but I know that they get – kicks by like ha ha got him <laughs> like why <laughs> like the spring breakers yes I, I saw a photo of florida and there was a beach and on the beach it had one the beach was segmented by county and one county you could not go to the beaches so it was an empty beach and then the distance it had another county with a complete full beach and so there was like an invisible line of where you could be and where you couldn't be <laughs> and there was a full beach and then everywhere around it was empty it was so weird looking. And I was like, why? I know you can. I know you can go. But why go? This is... I, I've seen people on TV say this, and I'm going to say this too because it's so true. Other generations have had major... Like, things like this happen every... You know, major world sickness events happen every 100 years or so. And the last one was the Spanish flu way back when, 1918, right? But for us, this is a huge, this is a huge event. This is like a everyone in the nation coming together generational moment. And instead of being asked to go fight in World War II or being drafted into Vietnam or 
any of the countless other things generations before us have been asked to do. You're literally just being asked to stay home and do nothing. <laughs> That's people have died on beaches and shit. And we're just like, stay home. Don't do anything. Just stay home. Your great war is not leaving your house. <laughs> and people are like, I can't do it. I'm going out. I can't. You don't tell me what to do. And it's like, what? This is literally the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Sure. Money will be tight for everyone. Welcome to the fact that jobs are disappearing rapidly. But a lot of people are in the same boat. And you would hope the government could like figure this shit out. And let's hope all of it is. But the idea is this is one of those moments where everyone has to come together and this is the thing. And people are like, not going to do it. It's like, why though? <laughs> it's not. This is the least challenging challenge of all the challenges. You're just being asked to do nothing. To do nothing. It's like when the internet goes out. And you're like, well, I guess I can get other things done. But there's that part of your mind where it's like, but I also just want the internet to come back. And you're there, your brain <laughs> is just constantly like, I just, just wait for the internet. What if I just keep checking about the internet? And you start going crazy. And then the internet comes back on, and then you don't even care anymore. You're like, oh, okay. It's like... Uh, right, it's being told you can't have something, so that's all you yeah. want. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. So people are like, I'm going to go out. I don't care. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. I said I continue to limit my news. It's very nice. Yes. I uh, I haven't watched news all week, and I feel so good. Yeah, I barely go on Twitter. I'll like go on maybe like twice a day, and I'll see stuff and be like, yep, all right. And I'm gone. And that's that. I go back into Animal Crossing. Go back into, you know, whatever else I can do. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a lot nicer. And there's so many ways that you can be social with people online without having to go to Twitter without having like you can join discords or watch people's streams or like hang out with friends in a video game there's so many ways to be social and if you're like well I just want to be active you can do things in your home do you have steps you can you can go up those up and down those steps you yeah. got uh you can you got a backyard you got a sidewalk you can, there's things you can do people just want to do the things they want to do the way they want to do them yeah exactly and i mean in the grand scheme of things a couple more weeks isn't even that bad. It, I, I Truly, I honestly believe it's going to be longer than that. I know they're saying at the end of April, but it's like, okay, <laughs> all right, we'll see. Because I figure, based on the way people have acted so far, I don't believe they're going to... I don't see a world in which everyone's like, okay, you know what, starting now, I'm going to take this seriously. I don't... And it's because of the people that don't take it seriously that we still have to be like, okay, let's do a few more months. <laughs> I guarantee that's going to happen. <laughs> this is literally I know, I like when you're in school and some kid like keeps doing something. You're like, yep, yeah, there we go. Ten more minutes of detention. You're like, oh, my God, Ricky, why did you stand up and throw a <laughs> rock at the window? You're like, all right, here we go. And some kid gets bored and he like drops his pen on the floor and they're like, up, oh, ten more minutes of detention. You're like, oh, my God, come on. I'm just, I've hit the point where I'm like, I know I can't, there's like not much you can do outside of keeping your distance and washing your hands and being sanitary. So I'm just like, well, that's really I'll it. Let's keep doing it. <laughs> although, although now I have, because I suffer from, I have seasonal allergies, right? Oh yeah. So I don't know when I'm sick and when I'm not, I'll wake up some days and feel fine. And some days will be like, this is it. I've got it. <laughs> this is my time. <laughs> and so I, I simply don't know Like I don't know And I've heard things from friends Like our dear friend Alex was saying Hey I talked to a doctor and he said If you can hold your breath for 10 seconds You are currently in the clear It doesn't mean you don't have it But it means you're not like in the bad place <laughs> And so I don't know the veracity of those claims But I tried it and I seem to be fine well, they've also said that a lot of things have started showing up like flu symptoms. Like I've read there's people that don't even get coughing or anything. They just got like chills and fever and like, uh, sure. you know, like stomach ache and like problems like that, which means, you know, it could be mutations of uh, of the, the virus just spreading differently. Like there's I know there's an asymptomatic strain, so there could be a flu like strain. There could be the coughing strain like it'd be mutating and shit. We don't know. A Apparently, I think this is going to be helpful to a lot of people because I know a lot of us, especially me, I'm, I always, anytime I leave the house, I have psychosomatic symptoms that are just like my chest, I think something's <laughs> oh, yeah. wrong with me. But, um, I know apparently in the coming weeks, they should have a test you can do at home 
that is a blood test, probably like a finger prick or something, mm -hmm. that will check and see if you have the antibodies. And so if you do, that means you've either had it or you've fought it off or maybe someone you knew had it or maybe... Or you had like no symptoms. Yeah, maybe you just had no symptoms. Yeah. But at least you'll know if you can get it again, right? Yeah. So if you have or the antibodies, at least you're protected. Or fighting it off the second time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're like a little bit protected more. And so you feel a little less stressed and worried. Like, okay, well, I'm good. So now I can only wor I, I know, I'll worry about other people. And so yeah. I would love that. That's the When that's out, that's the first thing I'm going to get. Because my overall stress is like through the roof right now. Not because... I I'm I'm feel like I'm good like I'm not gonna get anyone else sick because I'm mm. very good about my own personal being, but I'm still like if one of these MFers gets me sick that's around me I swear to God like I left the house for five minutes I saw two people if one of those two people had it I'm gonna be so mad right it's that's where I'm at like I ain't dying for nobody <sighs> I just held my breath for twenty seconds oh no all right here we go <gasps> all right um. Let's see. I mean, I could have went longer, too. I think I got powerful long. I mean, I do go to the gym three to four times a week, so that probably helps me out a bit. Plus, I actually went in the sauna a lot, and the sauna apparently helps your lungs out. I don't know what it was. I read some study on it, but it's like uh, something with healthier lungs if you go in the sauna for like 10 minutes at least or a couple times a week, which I did. So I don't know. Maybe that helped or something. <sighs> I don't know how long that was, but I felt like it held it a while, right? Yeah, it was like 20, 25 seconds. Yeah, I was trying to see how long I could do it. I, I'm fine, at least with that, but, you know. I feel like I, the thing is, like, if you're at that point, you probably know you have it already. <laughs> that's you true. You know what I mean? But I also feel like, you know, if, if I can, if I can like, work out and still be good, I'm, I, I yeah. clearly don't have a bad version of it. It's quite possible I still could always have an asymptomatic version, but, like, yeah. If I can do things and physically move my body without being like, <coughs> Dude, I imagine I was, <laughs> I'm good. When I was at Disneyland like two months ago. That's like when they started being like, up oh, a case in Chicago, a case in Orange County. And I was like, wait a second. I just <laughs> went from there to there and I'm going there and back. And so you I was were the like, guy. Uh, like, when I was at Disneyland, I remember that one kid was just like, bruh, bruh. and I was like, ah, get away. Uh, like, I don't know. It was. That was freaking me out a bit. I did have, like, my glands flare up for a bit after that. So I'm like, did I fight off a cold? Did I fight off a corona? Did I actually, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> no one has any information. We're all kind of like, uh, what? What do I do? What? How do I know? And so my hope, because you're, you can't go to a doctor. You're like, hey, can I see a doctor and get a test? And they're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> are you sick? And I'm like, no. They're like, well, then no, you can't come in. Yeah, okay. well, that's the thing, like, on that podcast, if you, I remember being like, oh, yeah, my glands, like, flared up for a few weeks, and now they went down. Everyone's like, yeah, you just fought something off. I didn't have a fever. I didn't have, like, symptoms. It was just my neck glands, like, flared up like they're fighting something. And I was like, sure. well, what can that be? And then they're like, ah, there's, like, a billion different viruses and things and everything. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, it could be that. It could be something else. At this point, I'm like, whatever. I feel like I understand the bad symptoms, though. Right, because a guy posted on Twitter, some I want to say maybe he writes for a newspaper or something, but he posted the idea that you know, hey, look, this is awkward for me to share. I didn't want to share it because I felt maybe there'd be some weirdness between me and what. But look, I have coronavirus, and I didn't want to like put it out there, but I have it. So let me tell you about what it's been like. And he, the way he describes it, is almost exactly like. That uh, uh, I don't want. It wasn't tuberculosis. What the hell? Uh, tonsillitis. Yo. Not tonsillitis. What did I have? Uh, bronchitis. Bronchitis. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I had bronchitis a few times when I was younger. We're like for a month, I could barely breathe, and it sucked. And then for about three months afterwards, I was still coughing. Oh yeah, I remember that. Even though I was fine, yeah, I was. We were at E three. I was still yeah. messed up. We I was just to... messed up. I remember that because it was E3, and I came there, and we were eating breakfast at one place. So like, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and you're in there for like 20 minutes. And I was like, is he dead? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was in the bathroom just constantly caught. Like, I didn't want to leave the bathroom because I, I just like this guy's tweets, I cough to the point where I almost felt like I had to throw up. 
Like yeah. I kept coughing, and you keep coughing to the point where your body's just like, clearly there must be something lodged in there, so let's get rid of it. But there was yeah. nothing. It was just a dry cough. And he's saying this is the exact for him coronavirus. The the sickness he had was the exact same thing. You feel like you have mucus and stuff and 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 goop in your lungs, but when you cough, nothing comes out, and you are just constantly coughing, trying to remove something that's not there really. And then apparently, if it gets really bad, your lungs fill up with liquid, and yeah, that's when you like have to go pneumonia. to the doctor, like and actually be put on machines and stuff. But he's like, for most people who get it and have it bad, but stay at home like me. This is what to expect. I was like, oh, my God, that's what I had in 2017. You had corona three years ago. Clearly, the symptoms are kind of the same because, you know, bodies are only so different. That's the thing. is like it's so different in everyone. That's what's so hard to right. figure out. So it's like, you know, one person get nothing. One person gets a super cough. One person's like the flu. One person, it's literally just a cough and a fever. It's gone fat. Like, it's, uh, it's just hard to track. But, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Yes. All right. Well, I've also, uh, well, the other thing I heard was like the viral load does matter, which is like if someone, that? if someone coughs in your face, you're going to get it worse than if someone, you know, touched a thing and it's been there for five hours and then you like scraped your hand on it and licked your hand or something. Oh, yeah. So okay. it like, uh, it especially affects that. I read like a couple of things that mentioned that with the viral load. Uh, which is why they Man. say a lot of doctors and medical people get it worse, actually, because they're around it so much. Yes, and considering they don't have the, the actual stuff to protect themselves anymore. Yeah, which, you know, this isn't... We're saying this as if it's like, I found a factual study. that Like, I just found a few things that mention that. Like, this isn't, like, confirmed or anything, but it's like a speculation. It definitely sounds real -er, right? Like, it you would imagine... Real. Well, because it's the same thing as when you get a flu shot, right? They're still yeah. putting the flu in you. Well, it's like a but dead at, version of the flu. Yeah, but it's like at a level that your white blood cells are like, I got this. Yeah, it's like a similar, it's like if you're only getting a tiny bit of the virus compared to, you know, right. someone literally if, being like, it, in your face. Yeah, imagine if someone put it on, if it's like on metal and you touch the metal five hours later, there might possibly be a little bit there. Yeah. But that little bit. If you're on a plane or your, something where someone's coughing and it's literally circulating their germs in the air, like that's uh, right. probably not good. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we aren't doctors, but we know doctors, and so we feel like we can speak for them. <laughs> I've been to enough doctors that I'm practically one, so listen to yeah. me and buy my book. Uh, my lawyers practically say don't a listen doctor. to me, and I'm not a doctor. Uh, no, don't oh listen my God. to us. But here's, Do your research. Uh, let me cap it off with a QVC story. Okay. So, as you know, I've been watching QVC for positive, uh, know. positivity and capitalism. <laughs> And <laughs> uh, they now have to have all their people call in. So they'll be like, we're calling in from Jeremy's house. And Jeremy's just there being like, yep, I'm a rep with uh, Dyson here in my house. And uh, Dyson vacuum is just truly sensational. And it's amazing how well the uh, QVC people with just them and like two people like the cameraman and someone else in the studio, like how good they are at just selling stuff. And it made me realize that I think I could be a QVC host. I think you could too. In my mind, you know that guy who sold the who sold like the workout equipment that had the crazy long hair. Remember that guy? And he I was like, "Get on the about. Randy Roller." <laughs> 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 he had like crazy long hair, and he was kind of like I don't know that fat fit that like fifty five year old guys have, where he's like kind of fit, but he still has a gut. And he's like, "Get on the Fit Roller," <laughs> and he'd like do the workout while he was trying to sell you the stuff. That's who I think you'd be good as. Yeah. Like, uh, there's this one guy. There's, like, a few QV QVC hosts I've learned now. There's, like, a couple old women. They got, like, some younger Instagram girls. They got, like, a wide variety. But then there's this guy who's been on for, like, 25 years, and he kind of looks like a gopher. And he's always, <laughs> he's got, like, that kind of blondish head of hair. And he's just like, let me tell you about the vacuum. You know, we're not, nobody's going outside anymore. The dust is building up. You got to get this vacuum. You start vacuuming. Look at this. The dust is going all over. You got to have clean air for your family to breathe. You don't want those, the, the dust circulating around, the germs getting everywhere. Open a window, you know, but you don't want to open it too long. You get more dust there. You got this Dyson vacuum. You don't want some garbage vacuum, right? You're going to be doing this all day long. That's why you got to buy this thing. Let's take callers. And they'll be like, it's uh, Gladys from uh, Washington. She's like, I... Uh, my family hasn't talked to me 
but when they do come over, I got a clean house thanks to the Dyson vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, that is sensational. Uh, and you catch him every once in a while being like, they're promoting something and he's just like, you know, when you want to go outside gardening or like for a walk. And then he's like, he paused and he's like, when you, when you're staying on six feet away from everybody, <laughs> you know, like, you know, the producer was just like, ah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah. hanging out with your friends, having a fruit brewski. <laughs> yeah. Stay in the socially distant. I just like watching QVC. It's great. I can tell. Again. I can tell it's your new thing. It's <laughs> kind of like the Ikea of home. It really is. It's it's essentially the Ikea of home. I really like the backgrounds they put up. Like, they have fake backgrounds where it looks like they're in a home in the middle of, like, uh, like I don't know, Idaho or some shit. There's, like, green <laughs> yeah. trees and everything. And then it's like, wait a second. That isn't real. <laughs> and the last time I was at Ikea, they actually had those. I posted on my Patreon where it's like they got a... These windows with, like, fake environments outside. That's what QVC does. It's like, wow, they're in some crazy home right now at a skyline. Or, like, wow, they're out in a, like, beautiful field. And really, it's just some studio in Pennsylvania. I don't claim to watch any QVC, but the stuff I've seen, my favorite are the knife shows. There's always a guy on there who is just way into the knives. This is a, this is a 32 inch steel hot touch of blade <laughs> <laughs> you're like what <laughs> my favorite's when they mess up uh like the some lady's like this pan is perfect for like pouring out your stuff efficiently and she pours it out and like and misses the plate completely and then she's like god it's kind of <laughs> hard from back here and the guy's like yeah it's a it's a crazy studio you got tables and stuff it, 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 uh, trust me <laughs> and you know they're just freaking out backstage this here is called the dragon's night <laughs> it has four to five inches of pure titanium wagyu cut steel. <laughs> and over here, you have your diamantium blade handle wrapped like the ancient samurai of Japan. And not only will we send you this, but also send you two Dragon's Bane daggers. Now, these daggers were forged in the heart of a volcano. <laughs> and I swear to you, they'll cut through metal through tomatoes, through your best friend if they piss you off and sleep with your wife. Now, let me tell you, not only will we send you those three fabulous blades, but we'll also send you 26 <laughs> carving <laughs> knives. They carve steak. They carve chicken. They carve up that bastard who slept with your wife. They'll do anything. <laughs> I'm telling you, you need to watch these. They're so good. And they They're take so callers good. just like, hey, yeah, I bought the knives, and uh, you are correct. They are one of the best purchases, if not the best purchase I've ever purchased in my life. Now, you know, uh, one uh, I have carved a few turkeys, a few chickens, and one bastard. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah um, man, I love these knives. All right, well, speaking of selling things, <laughs> have y'all heard about Hawthorne? Because I know we've talked about it before. Hawthorne is about smelling good. And right now, you could use it. Trust me, you got that I've been at home stank. And why not get something to smell, you know, smell like you're going out, but stay home. Smell nice for your partner. Smell nice for your lady friend. Smell nice for your guy friend. Hey, it's 2020. Smell nice for yourself. Hawthorne is going to keep you smelling your best and smelling your best is the step one of being your best. Trust me, right? You don't want to stink. It's just a fact. Stinky is bad. I, for a long time, used the same cologne. I used the same cologne forever and I loved it and I never got anything new. I always had the same cologne. I was like, this was my smell. And then over the years, I realized like, oh, I have other smells I enjoy. And Hawthorne helps you unlock that. The whole point of Hawthorne is that you go take a quiz and it gives you a ton of questions. Everything from things like, what is your favorite drink? To what kind of cologne have you worn in the past? To, you know, do when it comes to deodorant, do you like deodorant that is like the stick or the spray or the roll-on? All sorts of, they ask you tons of questions. And then what happens is based on all of your answers, they craft a scent for you. And you will have two scents, one that is for work, one that is for play. And the work one, it's kind of like, I'm off to go do things. And the play one's like, hey, I'm here for parties. And you can have that now in your home, created and crafted just for you. And, you know, 
You'll get compliments from your friends and your family for waking up every day and putting a little extra oomph into your stay-at-home routine. I know Crendor is smelling great and Toast is just like, that's my man. That's true. Right? Yesterday I went for my late night rain walk and uh, apparently when I got back I smelled like dog. So I sprayed some Hawthorne cologne on and it actually covered it extremely well. So you know what? It'll cover your dog smell. I was about to say, if you're trying to cover your dog smell, <laughs> this is the cologne for you. <laughs> they also do other personalized products like deodorant and shampoo and body wash. They all have unique smells designed for you as well. It's very simple. Again, you take a two-minute quiz, and Hawthorne will tell you what two colognes are best for you. And then it's risk-free, free shipping, free returns. It's that simple. And why not... Go a little extra mile in your daily routine, even though you're not going out, right? Do it for yourself. Like, when you breathe in, smell something nice. Check out Hawthorne at hawthorne.co. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E, promo code COX, to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O. Use code COX, 10% off, free shipping, free returns. Trust me, you're going to love it. And you're going to smell good, too. Also, today we're brought to you by Postmates. You're not going anywhere. You shouldn't go anywhere. Stay at home. Postmates can bring it to you. And not just food. Postmates can bring anything. They have numerous stores they operate with. And they can bring you everything from... Oh, man. If you need stuff to store the things Postmates bring you. If you're like, Postmates, bring me a bunch of different things... And a big plastic container from the container store. They can do that. From late night tacos to early morning energy drinks. Sometimes you just need something delivered fast. And right now, it's smarter to have stuff brought to you than do you go out. If you're like me, you're probably thinking about what to eat for dinner. And, and all the different foods you love and how you can't have it. And it looks like it's probably ramen again tonight. Why not get real ramen? Why not get something special you can I feel like well, at least once a week, you got to have one day where you do something fun for yourself, especially if you're trapped indoors. This is the way to do it. But they don't just deliver burgers and sushi. They can do groceries, convenience store, clothing store, you name it, they can do it. So with no more trips to the store, no more late night fast food runs, no more any of that, Postmates can help. Just download Postmates on iOS or Android, find your favorites, get anything you want delivered within an hour. For a limited time, you listening right now will get $100 of free delivery credit for the first seven days. So over the next seven days, if you sign on, every, for 100 bucks worth, everything is delivered for free. You don't have to pay any delivery charges. Super, super simple and easy. You're saving money and you can stay at home. To start your free deliveries, download the app and use code CRENDOR. That's code CRENDOR for $100 of free delivery credit with no minimum purchase for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it. All right, Crendor, let's go to Chopper Jefferson. has got the Crendor. How's the traffic out there? Uh, traffic is pretty much non-existent, except for the couple cars I see out there. You better be going to the grocery store to essential locations. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have to uh, chop the copter, drop down, and pick you up and drop you into the ocean. Uh, we are uh, allowed to do that by law now, uh, except we are not. But nobody will care because, really, we're saving lives. Uh, back to you. We actually have one of those, uh, you know, those cranes with a magnet thing on it, and they lift cars. <laughs> yeah. the tra That's what we have at the end of the chopper copter, yeah. and it's just been sitting there for years. And we didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> now we have a purpose. Finally. Yeah, finally we have a reason to have that thing on there. People said I was crazy for putting money into that, but we have it, and now we will <laughs> drop your ass in the ocean. Yeah, we'll do it. We will do it. <laughs> All right, let's go to weather. Weather time, weather time. Here we go to the weather time. <laughs> weather time, weather time. Four, three, five, four, one. No, wait. Back it up one. I got Napoleon, Ohio, and it piqued my interest. Piked, peaked, piked? Piked, peaked, piked? It piqued your interest, not piked. Piked your piked. interest is not a word or phrase. I thought, is it P I? Peaked. peaked. Oh, I guess you're right. Peak. Peaked. 
piqued. <laughs> it piqued <laughs> my interest. To stimulate interest or curiosity. You know when you like know a word, but you kind of don't know a word at the same time? It's like you'll use it in a sentence. Like, for if I didn't know it piqued, you're just like, oh, yeah, it piqued my interest. But in your brain, you're like, wait, did I use peak correctly? But so you know you the phrase. Know you, you know did. what it means. You know that piqued my interest means that you are now interested in it. Like, it made yeah. you more interested than before. So you know yeah. the phrase. Even if you don't know the exact definition of peaked, you internally know what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Have you ever done that, but with other words? Sure, I think everyone has. Everyone, especially when you're growing up, you hear phrases that parents or TV says, and you repeat it, even yeah. though you don't quite know exactly what it means, but you kind of get the gist of what it means. And so you say it, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's um, like when people try to do the monologue from The Matrix, which is like, indubitably, vis-a-vis -vis the, right? Like that whole monologue. Yeah. People, if you think about it, 90% of what he says makes sense, but you're <laughs> also like, what the hell did he just say? Yes. Um. Anyway, Napoleon, Ohio. <laughs> yes. 51 degrees. Feels like 45 degrees. Next 36 hours, you're going to have 41 degrees, 20% chance of precipitation. High wind gusts possible Monday, 44 degrees, 20% chance of rain. High wind gusts possible. I'm going to tell you right now, you're probably going to be getting those wind gusts because it was windy here today, and if it's moving east, hot dog, it's going to be a spicy uh, roller coaster. Mm -hmm. uh, cloudy skies on Monday, followed by partial clearing, low 35. Tuesday, you got 45 degrees, winds calming down. And over the next 10 days, you got 44, 45, 49, 56, 60, 57, 58, 58, 57, 55, 57, 56, 54. Getting into the 50s now with a lot of rain. Huawei. I don't know what I just said. Huawei. Okay, Huawei. 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 It sounds like the beginning of a great <laughs> song. Like, Huawei. Huawei. That's the Huawei weather. All right. Sports. Sports. Uh, sports continue to be shut down, but NFL free agency continues. Uh, players keep signing with teams. Ronald Darby signed with the Redskins one-year deal. Geronimo Allison, former Packer, going to the Lions. Uh, I saw someone tweet us about uh, uh, the uh, Minshew uh, mania. He's like posing with a jaguar on his Twitter. Have you seen Tiger King? I have not. Speaking of posing with jaguars, uh, take the time to watch it. We'll talk about it when you're done. It is All seven right. episodes on Netflix. Um, everyone, if you want to know if you'll enjoy it, go watch the trailer. It is the craziest thing. Every episode had another thing that was so crazy I couldn't believe it. I There's one episode where I literally sat there with my mouth open for 20% of the episode. Just like, what? It is insane. I never thought I'd see anything like it. I didn't know this world existed. I should have. I I mean, wow. Wow, it's crazy. Um, What is the premise behind it? Okay. The premise, the way the trailer sells it, is there's this guy in the middle of Oklahoma who owns a zoo where he keeps like 200 cats, wild cats. And he is a, the way he describes himself is a gun toting, Bible reading, uh, <laughs> gay, polygamist cat man. <laughs> I don't know how to, and then his nemesis is this woman in Florida who runs a wildlife refuge. But the twist is she possibly killed her husband in order to get the money to run the refuge and they're mortal enemies. What the shit? That's the setup. That's the setup for the entire thing. <laughs> and every episode it gets wilder and they introduce new people and it keeps getting crazier and crazier. And what you think the show's going to be is not where it ends up. And at first you're like, this is hilarious. I can't believe <laughs> this is like all these characters are so silly. And then about four episodes in, you're like, oh my God. What the fuck is insane? All right. Okay. This does sound right up my house. Speaking of crazy, I was going to purchase a David Lynch's master class. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, <laughs> is it an online course? It's a master class. No, but I mean, like, is it, does he, is, is it just the video of it and you can do it whenever you want? Yeah. Hmm. It's a 12 lesson master class where it looks like. It averages around 12 minutes a lesson. He has the art life, catching ideas, 
creativity in the writing process, educating yourself, casting for character, working with actors, on set creating a happy family, production design building unique worlds, cinematography manifesting David's vision, sound design and scoring, breaking the rules, making it true to ideas, uh, and bonus chapter, transcendental meditation. I love this. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should report back on yeah. everything. You have two assignments this week. To. That and Tiger King. Yeah, those will be... Everyone will be remind things. him. Remind yes. him of these two things. I will I will definitely do these things this week. I have So to. funny. Yeah, that is... When I saw that, it was like a master class. I was like, what the shit? Now I can learn straight from the source. <laughs> yeah, from the master himself. <laughs> um, and uh, in the actual other sports news... Uh, a couple of the NBA players that got the coronavirus uh, have been cleared of it, so that's good. That's sports. All right. Uh, what's our breaking story of the day? Big news story of the day. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, Florida man's cow is faster than it looks and has evaded police. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see. I don't know where this is going. I don't either. A cow described as faster than it looks is wanted by U.S. police after avoiding <laughs> capture for over a month. What? What? <laughs> what did it do? I don't. <laughs> Florida cow. Why do they keep calling it faster than it looks? <laughs> like it doesn't look that fast. It's just a cow. <laughs> 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 you can, it's just a you cow. can tell that is one fast cow just from looking at it. Like the cow doesn't look like a Ferrari or something. It just looks it's like a cow. It's just a cow. I can't believe there's a giant says this is wanted unknown <laughs> cow. <laughs> the, the elusive female has been on the loose in South Florida since late January, and they've just issued it a wanted poster for her. <laughs> uh. Oh a poster shared on Twitter by the Pembroke Pines Police Department reads, Wanted, unknown cow. <laughs> <laughs> Description, female cow, brown with a white head, faster than it looks, talented fence jumper, enjoys pools. What Pending is this <laughs> magical cow? Uh, it's, whatever it is, enjoys swimming. Yeah, and right. Jumping fences. Uh, pending charges, moving violations, Boo. uttering false checks, and fleeing and eluding the police. The police department said the bovine fugitive is not considered dangerous, but has been spotted near Interstate 75 in southern Broward County and has been known to walk into the road. Wait, that's it? <laughs> Where? <laughs> okay. They made a wanted poster for a cow they couldn't catch. That literally all it's doing is walking near roads. And they're like, this is dangerous. We need everyone there. <laughs> all points bulled in. We a wanted unknown cow. The Does the cow really belong to someone? Or is it, you know, it's it's an independent you cow figure and it finally a, a, broke free. A cow is big enough that someone would notice a missing cow. Right? Yeah. Like someone would notice their cow was missing. I think you might be onto something. I think this cow broke free. And maybe put, yeah. like, a stuffed cow in its place. You know, like, yeah. a bunch of hay and, like, <laughs> uh, some leather jackets or something. And like, you know, made right. a cow. And the guy's like, oh, that's my cow, Bessie, out there looking great. Right. And here's the thing. They say it's uh, it jumps fences and enjoys pools. Like, this cow, like, jumps some fences into someone's yard and goes swimming and then, like, make a dash for it. Maybe, like, maybe this cow is like during the day sneaks out and then at night goes back for the count. Yeah. Like, yep, Bess is still here every day. I think this cow is like some sort of super cow. We've already and heard about super snakes. It's only a matter of yeah. time before it crosses over to cows. I'm telling you right now, when when the coronavirus hits the animals, it makes them into real super mutant animals. I don't think that's true. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. There'll be some guy that's like, I got to jack my cat with Corona. <laughs> don't do and that. And then he goes sir. out and buys like a case of Corona beer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will be a super cat then. The cat's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, this could get insane. 
Who knows what super animal's next? Crocodiles? Ostriches? We went from snake to cow, so I imagine we'll get less threatening as we go. So next, I feel like, I don't know. Platypus. <laughs> That's right. It's <laughs> Beak of Justice, or Bill. What do they have? Bills yeah, the of bill. Justice. Bill of Justice. And the tail. They're, I mean, they're already mutants, as is. Mm -hmm. These things so could get crazy. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. They're already, you know, if you give them the ability to mind warp you, it's over for us. Yeah. What well, on us, Australians? They're screwed. We're fine. Oh, yeah. Australia's the last place you want to be when the animals go mutant. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're all done then. Yeah. They've already got mutant animals there, practically. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I guess that's it for us, huh? <laughs> I'd say so. Okay. Well, Grandor, hit up the socials. Socials, follow us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Cox and podcast. Hit the bell, hit the subscribe. Go to youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor for all the animations. Hit the bell, subscribe over there too. Go to our own YouTube channels, youtube.com slash Crendor, youtube.com slash Jess Cox. Uh, also, we're on Spotify, we're on SoundCloud, we're on iTunes. Just search Cox and Crendor. You'll find us. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your mom, tell your dad uh, over the phone or the internet because it's social distancing, but they probably want something to listen to. Why not share the uh, the worst best podcast around, uh, or best worst worst best? It's uh, you get the picture. Uh, also, uh, follow us on our uh, other stuff: Twitter.com slash Jess Cox, Twitter.com slash Crendor, Instagram.com slash Crendor was taken, Instagram.com slash Notorious Cox, uh, Twitch.tv slash Jess Cox, Twitch.tv slash Crendor. I've been playing Animal Crossing. That's it. You became that frog for a minute. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. And as always, to be continued.